Hi everybody, just a brief video today to look at a tool that's going to assist us in our time of need, specifically those times when there's a catastrophic failure or a crash or a power outage, anything that might interrupt us in the middle of us working on our file. All right, anybody that's worked on any file, whether it be a DWG related, whether it be uh, Revit, whether it be Word, uh, and if, has worked on it for a while and maybe not been uh, diligent in their saves and uh, is worried about uh, how much work has been lost since the last save, this tool can be very handy. And what it is is the system has the ability to do for us what's called an autosave. So the command that we would use to set this, and actually it's more of a set variable, is a command that is called uh, save time. So we'll go ahead and type that in and grab it from the autocomplete. And by default, when we work on the system, that value is generally set to 10 minutes. All right, so it's automatically saving for us in the background. Now, let me show you another place that we can get that that's helpful to know. If I type in the command options, it'll bring up a dialog box for us. And we can see open and save tab. And if we come down, we see uh, under file safety and precautions, automatic save. And there's a value here that'll let us set the minutes between save. All right, you see if I hover over that, it also shows with the tooltip that the save time system variable is what controls that value. Now, once again, like I said, 10 minutes is, is the default. However, we could check the box to turn that off. We could set it to zero. We could put it up to 120 minutes or every two hours. It can vary from the defaults for any number of reasons. We'll, we'll talk about a couple of those in a minute. Now, the first thing to understand is it's a bit of a misnomer to say automatic save because it's not saving in the same manner that you would traditionally save your file. In other words, if you worked on it for, you worked on a model for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and you use the command like save or QSave, it's literally updating that file directly. When it's performing an autosave, it's actually saving the status of the file in a different location. And the reason that it does that is because maybe you want to go into a file and just kind of tear it up, uh, take some measurements, do some analysis, something like that, but really have no intentions of actually modifying the file. If the autosave was actually saving during those situations, you'd uh, actually have to make a copy of the file without damaging it. In this case, it still relies on you to save the file at the times that you feel are appropriate. But in the meantime, it can set a, every certain number of minutes, it'll automatically save to an external location in the event that you needed to, uh, you know, uh, rely on that in, uh, in case something catastrophic happened. So that's the first thing. It, it's more of a, a disaster recovery save than it is of a typical auto save. So having said that, let's take a look at where the external location is for this particular file. When we go to files, we come down and look, we see the automatic save file location and the default is going to be, you know, under your username on the system, generally by default, uh, under a folder app data local temp, not necessarily a folder that immediately comes to mind for me or would roll off the tongue in the event that I had a failure and I had to go find it. So one thing that I like to do is redirect this to a different location. So I'm going to highlight this, we'll go to browse. I'm going to come down on my C drive and I've set up a folder in here that's called uh, underscore autosave files. That way in the event something happens, it's being put in this file, not in more of a generic temp folder where a lot of other temporary files might be saved. So we'll go ahead and select that, say OK. And then I'm going to do one more thing just so that we can see what's actually happening. I'm going to go to open and save here and I'm going to set the save time down to just a minute so that uh, we can physically see the, the saves while we're working. So we'll go ahead and click OK. I'm going to go ahead and just make a change to the file. And what's pretty cool about this is after I make the change, there's any change to the file, there's a, a counter that'll start running. And once it hits a minute, then you'll, you'll see it will automatically save for us. And now what's important about that is there was a point in time years ago that what it would do is if you would execute a command, it would go back and look and see, okay, has this amount of time elapsed? We'll run an autosave, then execute the command. So you could actually do some work, leave to go to lunch, come back, and if the system had lost power or there was a problem, 
it, it might not have made that last save for you depending on the last time you uh, executed the last command. Here, the, the counter or the timer actually keeps running. Once it hits that point, it will automatically do the, the save for us. And then it will, uh, the counter will cease to run until we modify the file again. All right, so we've moved this over. We'll pause here for just a second, wait for that to complete. All right, so we've seen that it's saved. If I go ahead and extend the command line window, we see that uh, the time had elapsed. It went ahead and it performed the autosave, and it saved it to our folder. So if we come out and look at our folder now, let's open up the folder. And if we look on our C drive, here is our autosave files. We now see that here is the uh, save file that uh, we have open. It automatically did a save, and it's got an SV dollar sign. Now it adds some numbers to the end of it, which are, um, I don't want to say they're entirely random, a portion of it's random, but they mean different things. For the most part, we don't necessarily need to concern ourselves, basically know that it will have a variation of the file name followed by some numbers with an SV dollar sign. If something were to completely fail, we could come back much like a backup file. We could uh, rename this SV dollar sign to a DWG. We'd be able to open the file and recover the file from there. All right, so um, once again, it's also, it's not like it's going to keep saving every minute unless we modify the file again. It will continue to wait for us to perform additional edits. Now, at any point in time, if we were to uh, save this file, all right, now we've performed a manual save. That saved it back to my Tuesday folder where it currently exists. And let's say we were going to close out of it. Just so that you know, once that file is closed out of, let's go ahead and open up our autosave location again. We look at the C drive, we look at the autosave files, and we see now that the entries for that, the system has automatically cleaned those up. All right, so it's automatically saving every so many minutes, whatever we set it to in the background in the event of a catastrophic failure. But if we perform a successful save on our own, when we uh, close out of the system and it's automatically been saved, it goes back and cleans out this folder so that we don't have files accumulating that we don't need. Because if we've made a successful save, that's the most current version of the file. It doesn't retain those here. Okay, so that's how it works. It's pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward. There's one other thing that I would, uh, that I would show you is in the event there is a catastrophic failure, and ironically, when I was running through this, this data set, I did have a failure. There is a, a tool that will come up uh, that's called Drawing Recovery, and it brings up a dialog box, and actually now, because, I, uh, because it cleaned out that folder, it actually removed it from my file here, but here's one that had, had a, a problem in the past. In the event that it, the system uh, fails or we lose power, or there's some catastrophic uh, issue that uh, abnormally terminates our, our editing session, the next time we open up the application, this Drawing Recovery Manager will pop up, or using the Drawing Recovery command, it will automatically bring this up as well. Uh, what it does is it shows us any files that were currently open at the time of the failure, and then it shows us any available instances of that file that we may be able to recover. So if there's a DWG, there could be a BAK or the SV dollar sign. We could select those files. It will give us an image in the uh, lower part of the screen here in the dialog to give us a preview of what actually exists in that file. Sometimes from that thumbnail, you can get an idea of which one of these is, uh, or what's listed may be the most appropriate version. And it will effectively uh, go through and, and do some of that renaming to get it back into a DWG for us. All right, so um, we'll go ahead and close that just in the off chance that uh, that, that were to occur. It's actually harvesting that file from the autosave uh, folder that we had identified. All right, now a couple of other things that are important. Anybody that's worked on uh, the system for a while, um, we'll go ahead and open up that file we were just in. Anybody that's worked on the system for a while, sometimes when we execute commands, those commands may... Uh, string together a number of commands, more like a, a script. So several commands would be strung together. Now, because the save time value is going to cause an autosave when the time comes, there are, there are times when that save time value may, may be turned off. All right, and the reason I put this out is it's great to have a value set to every 10 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever makes sense. But if a command gets terminated after that value is set maybe to zero, 
to like pause that for a minute until a command completes because they don't want an autosave happening in the in the meantime, then uh, it may not get reset back to what it needs to be. So what I want to do is show you this. Uh, in the times that you need it, you want to make sure that every time I launch the application, I know that that save time is set to the value that I need. We can actually tie that to the launching of the program. All right, so let's uh, let's do this. I'm going to go back to options, just because I don't want the system here trying to save on me every minute. We'll uh, set it to 10 minutes. We'll say that's good. And then uh, just so that we see something different, uh, we'll set set it maybe to my default here. I'm going to open up a, a text file. I've got it called just acad.txt and it's empty. All right. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to put this uh, a command in here. Basically what I would type in at the command line, I could set a uh, set variable. It's actually a one line lisp command. Set variable uh, save time. And I'm going to set that to 15. All right, just so it's something different than what's uh, what's there for the default. All right, so what I want to do is we'll say file. I'm going to say save as. I'm going to set this to all files, and I'm going to set it to acad.lsp. And what this will do is this will become a, a script that will launch every time I run the application. The great part about this, once again, is save time is a value that we set and that's the value that we have all the time. So it's not a different value for every drawing that we're in. In the off chance that a command uh, resets the value of save time temporarily to execute a number of other commands and does not complete properly, thereby putting it back to what it should be, uh, we could be in a situation where we're assuming that it's saving but the value is actually zero or it's been turned off or uh, set to 120 or something like that something other than what we would like and then in the you know the chance we've got a failure now we find out it wasn't actually saving when we thought to get around that what I want to do is set something up that every time I launch this application it's going to set the value for me to what I'd like to see so we're going to do that to uh, save it in ACAD LSP file and we're going to go ahead and put that in a folder on my C drive here we're going to put it in program files we're going to come down to Autodesk. We'll come down to, in my case, I'm using 2018. This is Civil 3D. It's combined AutoCAD folder, so I just need to go into the AutoCAD 2018 folder. And then I'm going to come down to the Support folder. So if we look under Support, I open that up. I've got a couple of Lisp routines in here already. I want to save this Lisp routine in that folder. Okay, now if you have an AutoCAD or an ACAD Lisp file already, it means that either you or your system administrator, CAD manager, has already set up a number of uh, options that they would like to be available every time you launch the application. So we would just add that set var line for save time to that file. In this case, I don't have one, so we'll go ahead and just save it here. We'll say save. Uh, I'm going to, it's telling me that I need uh, appropriate rights to save it to that folder. You know what? Let's. Let's save it on my desktop, and then I'm going to do this. We'll minimize this, and then as far as my uh, my file goes, let's do let's do this. We're going to do from my desktop. We're going to copy the file now, and I'll see if I can paste it into that folder. So we'll say C colon. We'll come down to Program Files, Autodesk, AutoCAD. Uh, AutoCAD 2018 and then support. All right, I'm going to right click and we're going to say paste. And now it's going to tell me that uh, I need to provide administrator permissions to do that. I'll say continue. It automatically transfers the file and I'm ready to go. Okay, so with that, if I uh, go into options, once again, you see that my automatic save time is set to 10. I made my my configuration file or my script, if you will, that every time the application loads, um, it'll set it to 15, just so it's something different. Let's set it up to uh, 100. All right, we'll go ahead and uh, close out. I'm going to uh, close out of Civil 3D here. Save changes to what I was in, sure. We'll go ahead and relaunch, relaunch Civil 3D. 
And as my Civil 3D relaunches, it's automatically going to read that that LSP, LSP file we created. And even though that set save time variable was set to 100 and would have been 100 until somebody manually changed it, we'll see that it's automatically going to change it back to 15. All right, so we'll give that just another second to get uh, open here. Once that's open, we'll type in options. And if we look at that folder, we see that now it's automatically set to 15. All right, so from a, a save time perspective, fantastic tool. It's automatically saving for us. It's going to uh, save it in an external folder in the event that there is a failure that we can recover it. Uh, to protect ourselves even further, we can through the um, creation of a script or an ACAD.LSP file, we can have the system automatically reestablish that value for us in the event that something changes it, something or someone, that we know that every time the application is relaunched for us or maybe anybody else that we set it up for, that it's automatically going to go back to the appropriate default. There's one other thing that I would show you that may be helpful. This particular folder that it's going to put the, uh, the automatic save file in, uh, some folks would like to uh, maybe not have it clean up after itself. In other words, uh, you saw when I, I saved successfully, it automatically cleaned the files out of that folder. Let's go back and take a look at, since we closed that other file and didn't save, let's see if that folder is empty right now. So we'll look at autosave files. Okay, I've just got the uh, save temp file for the file that I'm, I was working on earlier. I got a TMP file. But because there's no autosaves, it's completely cleaned out now. All right, some folks would maybe like to hang on to those. Maybe they uh, saved or, you know, the, that file somehow became problematic and they the backup file was an issue or it had been deleted and, man, I'd really like to be able to go back to my automatic save folder, but it got cleaned out on me. What you can do is you can take this uh, autosave folder that you're going to put your files in, uh, you can put it out on a network drive, and you can have either you, if you've got the rights, or your network administrator to set the rights to that folder such that you can write to it, but not delete from it. So then uh, the system will be able to write to that folder to add the autosave files, but then because it doesn't have the ability to delete, uh, it will automatically retain those autosave files over time. Because it's got that random number at the end, we don't have to worry about them conflicting with each other, so it should continue to perform just fine. You just need to, uh, as an administrative thing, somebody should probably go in there and clean that out because if you don't, it will continue to grow over time. All right, so with that, uh, once again, a little longer video than what I had hoped for, but uh, just wanted to, uh, uh, being able to recover files in the event of a catastrophic issue is an important thing. Uh, using save time and the auto save feature is something that can help us a lot and then leveraging a couple of the other strategies we talked about Having it automatically set when we go in can further protect us and um, getting creative with the folder where they're placed will make it both easier to find. And then also, if you want to uh, work with the rights a little bit, uh, help us retain those, those files in there if, uh, if need be. So hope this has been helpful, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. See ya.